but I'll wait till they put the red light on. There's no red light. <laughs> That's the best part. Oh, it's going. <laughs> So, what's up guys, guess what showed up, finally, well, that's through no fault of Techno Toy Toy again, it shipped to the P.O. Box in the States, and didn't really have time to go pick it up, this uh, beautiful T34AC adjustable can here, I opted for the red face with the gray ring, there's lots of different color options, and uh, it's a really good quality looking piece. You can see like the little machine marks from the engravings. Uh, the only fault I have with this is it says 4AC, which is what it's for, but we're putting it on a 4AF, so I'm a little bit tempted to engrave a line in there. But uh, I don't want to wait any longer. Let's get this on the car. First, we're going to start by marking the teeth on the timing belt so we can realign the belt when we reinstall the new cam gear. We've already broken the cam gear bolt free and turned the motor over so that the timing marks on the cam gear indicate top dead center. Now I gotta get my 14 millimeter wrench and undo the tension on the tensioner. Or undo the tension on the belt by releasing the belt tensioner. Gently pry on the tensioner, placing tension on the belt, and snug up the tensioner bolt. Oh, that's rich. Yeah, perfect. Don't slip a tooth. 
I suppose at this point, it could be worth telling you that it's kind of a bizarre combination of ending, and that's the reason why the timing's off. It's a uh, Corolla 93 to 97 Corolla Celica 1.8 block with a 1989 A92 Corolla 4AF carbureted cylinder head, which have both been decked and milled. And uh, with the 4AC swap on the 1.8 building, the 7AC, you can use the Porsche 944 timing belt. But because the cam gear is offset of center, I ended up having to use, I think it's like a 1978 Nissan 200 SX timing belt. And then uh, even after that, timing's still out. It's a couple degrees, but we'll figure that out in a minute. Found it! Now, loosen the cap screws that are clamping the cam gear together. So I had a bit of a think on this, and uh, this 18 millimeter socket actually drops right in the center hole here, and we'll ride up and down the spark plug tube, and I'm just gonna drop this extension below it, and I am gonna read that with my dial indicator. Stay in base. Now the fun part. In this scenario, with the engine at top dead center, the exhaust cam was advanced 2 degrees from its stock location, while the aftermarket cams call for 2 degrees retard on the exhaust side. Retarding the exhaust cam advance the intake 2 degrees, and now we have 4 degrees of overlap, which will shift the power band back up to the top end. Yep. Tighten up the cap screws on the cam gear, and reinstall your spark plug and wire. Splash guard installation is the reverse of removal. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Overall, it's a fairly simple install. It's a, it really is just a bolt-on affair. And then you can adjust your cam timing to the specs that uh, are required for your aftermarket cam draft. Come summertime, it should be pretty fun to do a retune of our ignition timing and get some adjusting down to the carburetor and change some jets out. It should be a jolly good time. Alright, so if you like this video, subscribe and we're going to have much more videos. We're going to have a few more videos coming out in the future. Um, we have to remake these upper strut mounts and move them back a bit to get some more caster. And we also might have to raise the steering rack up a little bit. But uh, stay tuned and Thanks.